Hello, and thank you for joining. Today I have the pleasure of providing a technology update for the downstream bioprocessing webinar. Specifically, I will give a brief update on the use of two spectroscopies in downstream bioprocessing. In our agenda, we will first review mid-infrared FTIR and Raman. We will ask, what can each of these technologies really do? We will take a look at each technique and ask, how does in C2 spectroscopy really work in bioprocessing? Ultimately, we will get an update on the Mettler Toledo keys to process analysis through user enhancing trend finding. And finally, a review of where others like yourselves have found value in spectroscopy for downstream bioprocessing. Just as our chemistry colleagues have come to discover, there are a number of historical assumptions about the utility of spectroscopy. Assumptions which continue to suppress its perceived value and underutilize its potential for bioprocessing applications. We will start by addressing some of these myths and assumptions. First, that FTIR does not work in water. Although widely accepted, mid-infrared does have the ability to obtain chemical information across a full spectrum, even in aqueous environments. In fact, the dynamic range of mid-infrared can simultaneously monitor multiple components in complex aqueous matrices from approximately half a gram per liter to above 200 grams per liter. Next, that protein concentration measurements are only suitable with UV. While UV is in fact the established method, FTIR and Raman both interrogate fundamental vibrations of the molecules. Protein concentration and even some structural information is available. That spectroscopy doesn't replace sampling. In fact, this is true. Grab samples analyzed by UV and HPLC can be key for quality control. In C2 React IR, uncovers what is hiding between HPLC samples for true continuous process understanding. FTIR for bioprocess monitoring requires an expert. With advances in technology, including one-click analytics in ICIR7 and removal of liquid nitrogen, spectroscopy is actually so much easier as we will demonstrate later on. Tracking bioprocesses requires chemometric modeling. While both true and false in certain situations, most processes with Raman may still in fact require models. Properties of FTIR actually allow us to take advantage of Beer's law, where in fact absorbance equals concentration. So if we start with a known concentration, has our absorbance doubled? Well, and in fact, then the component concentration is now 2x. So what is spectroscopy capable of? If we now look at a side-by-side -side comparison of a mid-infrared FTIR system and a comparable Raman system, we can actually see that there are quite a lot of similarities. In most cases, molecules which are really strong for Raman actually do not have a similarly strong absorbance for mid-infrared FTIR. But the reverse also generally holds true. Molecules which have a strong mid-infrared absorbance are weaker Raman signals. The two technologies provide complementary information. And sometimes, one method is genuinely better fit than another. But while mid-infrared FTIR observes the fundamental and unique vibrations of each molecule, and Raman observes the symmetrical bonds or dipole moments of each molecule, both techniques will often provide highly similar quality of information for all common molecules of interest in downstream bioprocessing. While detection limits are generally equivalent, speed of response or measurement time tends to be faster for mid-infrared versus Raman, simply because Raman must in fact collect more light for a longer period of time to achieve the same signal to noise levels as mid-infrared. If processes change slowly, this difference is negligible. However, in several bioprocess applications, such as chromatographic load or elution monitoring, the speed of mid-infrared FTIR can offer distinct advantages. 
As we can see from several independent case studies, mid-infrared FTIR also lends its linearity and dynamic range, which is made possible by Beer's Law, along with its approachable interface and analysis to be well suited for downstream bioprocessing workflows. While process sampling will always be required, especially in relation to critical offline analytical techniques, there are often problems and challenges which mandate that sampling be minimized where possible. In particular, bioprocess workflows can be beleaguered by material restraints, changing process conditions when sampled, significantly delayed process decisions while dependent on information returned from analytical methods, and probably most overlooked, the fact that scientists are simply busy people with multiple demands on their time. These problems also have many different implications. The more expensive materials can be needed, that samples may not be representative or poorly correlated, variability from sample to sample and even scientist to scientist, poor understanding of the impact of process conditions and less actionable information, longer development times, delayed decisions, and even replicated experiments just for the need of data density. And last, that critical events may impact product or process quality and may in fact be missed. Okay, so what actually is in situ spectroscopy in bioprocess workflows? Foremost, we begin with a direct interrogation of the biochemistry with a probe-based technology. Rather than interrogate the sample at discontinuous single points, spectra are actually continuously captured and time resolved. As the entire spectral view changes over time with the process, we identify, trend, and quantify these multiple critical molecular entities, again with a kinetic view of the process. This can often provide unique mechanistic insights, identify previously unknown intermediates or byproducts, and track chemical or structural molecule conversions. Now we ask, how exactly does in situ spectroscopy actually work? Okay, so what React IR does in real time is it takes a spectra as a function of time of the bioprocess chemistry itself. And quite simply, from these changing spectra, we can peak profile these over a period of time. And because absorbance is proportional of concentration, you end up with a set of molecular process profiles. So in this particular instance, as the process is proceeding, we get important questions answered. We would know, when does it start? When did my excipients begin to interact with each other? We would also know, when does the process complete? When do I have my final products or formulation conditions? And the other thing that we can do with React IR, for example, is we can even tell, maybe there is an intermediate mechanism in my process, so that the actual process may be occurring by a mechanism that we haven't even considered before. So in a very, very simple way, in real time, we answer the key questions. When does it start? When does it stop? What is the mechanism? And what do my kinetics look like? So, now that we have covered the theory, let us take a minute to show reality. Many traditional downstream bioprocess workflows typically take between two to eight hours, and much of this time can be spent at or nearly around the process simply processing the last sample before getting ready to move on to the next. Historically, addition of PAT into a process workflow unfortunately meant the addition of results analysis time once the workflow was completed. We have since recognized that in order to truly get the most out of spectroscopy PAT in bioprocess workflows, experimental analysis time needs to be efficient. But along with this come some challenges of today that need to be addressed. First, with the wonderful treasure trove of inline data, 
there is also an accumulation of information which needs to be sorted through and made sense of. As with most spectroscopic methods, until recently, subject matter experts would have been required to analyze and extract trends which accurately reflect the process. In order to address the needs around efficient data analysis and reporting, we first sought to understand the problems through observation of a number of subject matter experts as they went through the process of evaluating their data so that we could understand how people work with data. Through this, Mettler Toledo leveraged our expertise to develop analysis-specific tools and automated processes to speed and confirm experimental findings. The Mettler Toledo React IR Mid-Infrared FTIR and React Raman spectroscopy software utilizes one-click profiling with fine trends. This automated process takes the best practices workflow of an expert chemometrician and extracts the best peak profiles to trend the critical components of your unique process over time. The process can be user verified and refined as needed, but ultimately brings typical experimental evaluations to around two minutes without subject matter expertise. In fact, fine trends and assisted spectral analysis are already used by many bioprocess scientists who have begun to adopt Mettler Toledo in situ React IR and React Raman PAT. Some of the widest application adoption of React IR and React Raman comes from applications including protein and excipient concentration monitoring during TFF and UFDF steps, chromatographic measurements such as column loading and fraction monitoring, vaccine and adjuvant chemistries, biocatalysis raw material preparation through conjugation or adsorption, other bioconjugate chemistries for antibody drug conjugates, and even polysaccharide or other protein conjugates, various oligonucleotide synthesis workflows, and even protein crystallization and precipitations. In practice, React IR and React Raman PAT provide critical bioprocess information, especially when sampling for offline analytics is not practical nor efficient. However, spectroscopy is but a unique window of insight to select critical process parameters for bioprocess applications and workflows. When other needs arise, particle system characterization and automated reactor systems, along with integrated analytics, enable their own unique windows of insight and are powerful tools in any bioprocess development laboratory.